Good morning, and welcome to Burke's Worship Online. Today feels a little different because I'm welcoming you to worship online as we do have some people who are gathering in person in the building this morning. I know though that the vast majority of the people that worship here are choosing to join us still online for a variety of reasons. And we still wanna make sure that we are meeting that need and welcoming you to this space. And so I am glad that you are joining us this morning. Really the only big thing to announce is that we are restarting our in-person worship services. If you want to join us for that in the future, look for the registration that comes out on the website and on Facebook. And uh, if you will register ahead of time, that will help us in multiple ways. Um, but we do need you to do that. And then we do need you to wear a mask while you're in this place and to be able to answer some questions. But we, wherever you choose to join us for worship, we are glad that you are with us. And we invite you to set aside all the things that are distracting you and to be present with God in this moment. Right now I'm staring down a giant Right now I can't see past my pain And right now my songs have turned to silence And you've never seen so far away But I still believe I still believe There's no heart you can rescue No war you can't win no story so over, it can't start again. No pain you won't use, no wall you won't break through. It might be too much for me, but there is no impossible with you. Right now you're fighting all my battles. Right now you're breathing life again and Right now you're mighty in my weakness So right now my soul will say amen There's no heart you can't rescue No war you can't win No story so over It can't start again no pain you won't use, no wall you won't break through. It might be too much for me, but there is no impossible with you. Your name is greater, your love is stronger, your ways are higher. There's nothing that you can't do Cause there's no impossible with you Oh, there's no heart you can't rescue No war you can't win No story so over It can't start again No pain you won't use Hi friends, I sure have missed you, but I'm glad to be sharing a little message with you guys today. So before me, besides Breeze over here, I have a cup of Kool-Aid. And some people might say that this cup of Kool-Aid is half empty. And that's a really kind of negative way to look at it. And some people might think that it's half full, which is more of a positive way to look at it. We can decide how we feel about things. We can decide to make something that's negative into a positive. And right now I think it's really hard not 
to see all the negative things that are going on right now. Like maybe you miss your friends or you miss going to the pool or you didn't get to go on vacation. But there's positive ways to look at things. We're spending more time together. You're having a good restful summer. I think God wants us to stay positive and what and no matter what happens, we need to know that God will work things out for good. We don't let the bad times keep us down. We place our faith in Jesus, knowing at the end that he has our hearts and that he loves us very much. When we have faith in Jesus, the glass isn't half empty, it's half full. And if we have faith in Jesus, it will soon be overflowing with his blessings. So my challenge to you is to look for the positive in every negative situation. Like, maybe I'm tired of staying home, but Breeze over here is real happy that I've been home. Aren't you, Breeze? Aren't you, Breeze? So just try to think of the positive of every situation, and I really think it's going to make you feel better this summer, and it's just going to make you a happier person. And I hope you enjoy this song. It's called Overflowing, and I hope at the end of the song, after you sing and dance, you're going to be overflowing with positivity. Bye, guys. I said, Lord, Lord Jesus, won't you come and fill me up? Cause without you, I'd be feeling so empty. I said, Lord, Lord Jesus, won't you come and fill me up? Cause without you, I'd be feeling so empty. Fill me up till I overflow. Uh -huh. Fill me up till I overflow. Yeah. Fill me up till I'm overflowing. Oh, I'm overflowing. Oh, I'm overflowing. Oh, I'm overflowing. Oh, I'm overflowing. Yeah. Break it down. Control. I said love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, faith, and self-control. I said love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, faith, and self-control. I said love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, faith, and self-control. Fill me up till I overflow. Fill me up till I overflow. Fill me up till I overflow. Fill me up till I'm Psalm 145. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your works to one another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your work shall give thanks to you, O Lord and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you 
and you give them food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we come to a time of tithes and offerings in our service, I want to take a moment to say thank you. We know that things look very different for a lot of people right now. But your gifts to this church have allowed us to continue to do the ministries that we have committed to through this year. To reach out to people in the community and to meet people's needs. We ask that you remember that when you give. It's easy when you're home and online and and doing different routines to, to lose sight of the fact that the gifts that you give here actually do change people's lives and meet the needs of people around us who are less fortunate than us. I pray that uh, in this time, you will remember that and that we will be able to always continue the things that we need to continue, um, be able to pay for the things that we need to pay for to meet the needs of people around us. And I pray that you will help us in that way uh, and that you will know that it really does matter, that it really does meet people who are in need. So let us pray. God, as we take up this offering, as we as we take this time to remember all that you have blessed us with, we pray for those who are struggling in this time, and we pray that you will use the gifts that we receive in this time to meet people where they are and to provide for this community. We know that as individuals, we can do a little, but together we can do a lot. We pray that this church will be seen as a place that does a lot to meet the people around us. We ask this in your name. Amen. Sing this out. grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now am found was blind but now I see That taught my heart to fear And grace my fears relieve How precious did that grace appear The hour I first Like a flood, his 
mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. My chains, my chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. When we've been there, been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun. Aren't you looking forward to that? My chains. My chains are gone. Set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. Today we continue our prayers from the United Methodist Church on Discipleship. For prayers for anti-racism. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Spirit of God, we have heard your call to share in the building up of the kingdom of God. Fill us with the desire to change ourselves and to change the world. Inflame our passion for justice into a commitment to address unjust situations and structures. Deepen our concern for our sisters and brothers in America and overseas who endure the burdens of poverty, war, exploitation, and persecution. Let us enthusiastically play our part in the mission of the church in the modern world. Banish any complacency in our hearts and minds. Teach us to recognize the lack of justice. May we always act in the spirit of justice. May we, may we envisage, pray about, and create a different sort of world in which injustice is replaced with a renewed sense of solidarity and care enlivened by the Spirit. May we go forth in the peace of the Holy Spirit to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Good morning. The scripture is from the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 16 through 19 and 25 to 30. Hear the word of the Lord. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, we played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by, by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy, heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is really good to see you all here today. I'm saying that even though this is the uh, recording that we're going to make for um, the nine o'clock version of our online worship, it's good to know that you are there and that you are watching. 
And we will have some people in the sanctuary this morning. I suspect not a lot because it's a holiday weekend and because many people just aren't comfortable coming back yet. And that's fine. But I want you to know that there are people in both places today. And you're all part of who we are as the, as the family of God in this place. I recently watched uh, another pastor in a different tradition uh, giving a sermon, and, and he talked about the sanctuary, a, a very holy room that we talk about. He always calls it the family room. It's the place where the church family comes to have fellowship. Whether we're here together today or, or separated and watching electronically, we're still family and we welcome you to this service. Now, these two passages that we've read, Psalm 145 and some selections from Psalm, I'm sorry, from Matthew 11, really go well together. Psalm 145 is a, a beautiful psalm of praise that, that is found at the end of the psalm. As a matter of fact, if you've ever uh, decided, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read through all the psalms, and you start off with great gusto, and maybe you read three or four the first day, and, and a couple the next day, and, and then you skip a day, you might never have gotten to 145. And it's not one that we, we remember and call out very much, but it has some great stuff in it. It says in verse 8, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. I want to emphasize the word all there. The Lord is good to all. And his compassion is over all that he has made. It's a wonderful psalm. And, and Celeste did a great job of reading it this morning. But I'd like you to, to go home this afternoon and just read it verse by verse. There are only 21 of them. Read it and know that this is a word that is written for you. For you to hear and for it to make a difference in your life. Now I want to contrast that, that, that great psalm of praise, which is so confident and, and strong, with what we find in the 11th chapter of the book of Matthew. It actually, you can go back to chapter 10, and, and there Jesus has uh, called his 12 disciples, and he's sent them out into the world, and, and he's told them that things aren't going to be easy. You're going to go some places, he says, where, where um, people are going to welcome you, and they're going to hear you, and they're going to respond to you, but you're also going to go some places where they don't, where they don't welcome you and they don't hear you and they don't care a thing for what you're saying and they're going to be rude and hard and evil towards you. It doesn't say this in, in Matthew, but it says it in Mark that, that when Jesus gave them instructions, he said, when you go and if they receive you, then say, the kingdom of God is at hand. And for those that don't receive you, you give them the same message. The kingdom of God is at hand. And really, that's a message that, that we all have said. And, and it doesn't matter that we've been saying that for, for 2,000 years, because it's still true. The kingdom of God is near us. The kingdom of God is with us during this time. Now, in chapter 11, we have a story that we've talked about before. John the Baptist, who's been in prison for a while now, he's begun to get weighed down by the difficulty of his life. Here he is in prison, and he's been waiting and waiting and waiting for something to happen, and nothing changes for a long while with him. 
so he sends two of his emissaries, two of his disciples, and, and they come to Jesus and they say, John wants to know, are you really the one? Are you the one who was to come? Are you the one that I was expecting, the one that I was talking about all this time? It's so easy for doubt to creep into our life, for, for depression even to creep into our life, for us to, to feel like I don't like how things are going and I wish they were like whenever. It could be that you wish things were like they were back in January when we didn't know the word coronavirus. It could be that, that you wish things were like they were 10 years ago when you felt younger or stronger or, or more healthy. It could be longer than that. It could be a time back in your past when everything seemed to be just right. And you just want to go back to those days because those felt so much better. And here we are being weighed down by everything in the world. And in the world we live in right now, it seems like you can't please anybody. I have to apologize for, for some things I've said over the years, because I've gone around for years saying that it was P.T. Barnum that said this, but I came to find out it wasn't. It was actually a guy from England named John Lydgate who said, you can please some of the people all of the time, and all of the people some of the time, but you can't please all of the people all of the time. Abraham Lincoln changed it a little bit. He said, you can fool some of the people all of the time. That's not nearly as good. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue with John Lydgate a little bit. I don't think you can please all of the people any of the time. Because there's always somebody who's, who's got a track that they're living in. And, and they can only see that one track. And, and if you're not on it with them. You're not going to please them at all. And so we live now in a, in a place where it doesn't seem to matter whether you're, you're going this way or that way. There's always somebody who's going against you. Jesus expresses that feeling when he talks about John the Baptist and, and himself. And he compares the, the generation that he's in to uh, children sitting in the marketplace. And, and they play the pipe, but uh, you don't dance. And, and, and what he's trying to say is that John the Baptist came representing kind of the old way of doing things. He, he represented the law. He represented repentance. He represented the way that we were told to live before. But now Jesus represents something new. And, it, and it's different. It's completely different all the way down to its core. And yet people don't want to accept that either. They saw John as being way too harsh and they see Jesus as being, being way too open, I guess. But they're afraid. They're afraid to receive what he has to share through his grace. We skipped the part in the middle when Pat was reading where it says that there were three cities that, that Jesus calls out in particular. There were Bethsaida and Capernaum and Chorazin. We know about Bethsaida and, and we know about some of the miracles that happened there. You remember the, the pool where people were healed. And we remember Capernaum because that's where Jesus lived as an adult. And we remember the story of the guy who was let down through the roof and was healed. We don't really know where Chorazin is. It doesn't really exist anymore. 
And, and we could guess, that, but we don't know which miracle was done there. But it may have been the miracle at Cana of Galilee, the very first miracle that Jesus did. And what Jesus is saying to these cities is, is if other people like Sodom and Gomorrah had seen the miracles that you've seen, why things would be totally different from them. But you've seen them and it still hasn't changed your heart. You still haven't trusted me. And that's what we need to remember next. In verse 25, the last section that Pat read, it starts with a very important phrase. It says, at that time. Now, there are lots of ways to describe time in the Greek language. They have the word chronos, which you can guess means time, and they ha have another word that means at that hour. But this one is kairos. At this time, Jesus said these things at, at a, a special moment in time, a, a place where everything is different and it's going to be different from this moment on, if you will. It's a wrinkle in time where things get changed and something amazing happens. He says these words and he says them to all kinds of people, to people who are, who are confused about what he's just said, to Bethsaida and Capernaum and Chorazin, to, to people that are confused because they've been out trying to do the right thing and people haven't received them, to people who have believed but their belief is getting tired. He says, come to me all that weary and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. What are we going to learn from Jesus? He's going to tell us right here. For he says, I am gentle and I am humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. The answer to what we need in this world isn't hurrying around and doing other things. It isn't, it isn't trying to find the, the biggest or the loudest or the best church or, or it's not trying to be spectacular in some personal way. It's to understand that Jesus is the one who leads us and who brings us mercy and grace. And that he doesn't do it with a, a, a strong, harsh hand. He doesn't do it by calling us down in the middle of public. But he does it instead by being quiet and humble of heart and calling us to be that same way, to be gentle, not harsh, to be humble, not, not forcing our will on somebody else, but instead inviting them to see. What did Jesus do when John's disciples came to see him? He said, Go back and tell John what's happening. People are being healed. The hungry are being fed. All of these things are happening that you predicted because of God's kingdom, because it's near. And they went back. We don't have a, a, a story. We don't have any recollection of, of what they said to John, but I'm sure that they quoted Jesus pretty quickly and, and well. And I hope, I believe that John's heart was lifted 
because he saw the goodness that came with Jesus. A Jesus who said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light because he gives us, he gives us grace. And I don't know who said it. It was some anonymous person in the early church that says, because we don't have to bear grace, it doesn't weigh down upon us because grace bears us up. And if you don't believe that Jesus had the authority to do these things, you can just look back in, in, in verse 25 again. For there it says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. I just want you to hear that phrase. You've heard it in a song before. But Lord of heaven and earth means that God the Father is truly all-powerful. That he is able to heal all of heaven and all of earth. And then just a little bit later in verse 27, Jesus says, all things have been given to me by the Father. So that makes Jesus the Lord of heaven and earth. Jesus is the one who, who has the power to change those things in our life that we're struggling with and to help us to see joy through the mercy that we've received through him. So trust Jesus. Learn from Jesus. Be somebody who is gentle and humble of heart and receive what he has to give to you because it's grace. It's marvelous grace. And it comes from the person who's in charge of all of heaven and earth. I'm going to ask you to do something this morning, and, and, and we haven't really done this before. And, and it doesn't matter if you're watching online and you've never watched before. I'm going to put my phone number up on the screen here in just a moment. And what I'd like for you to do is I'd, I'd like for you to, to write down something you're struggling with. Now, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you a deal. I'm not going to share this with anybody else. I'm not even going to call you up and say, hey, you want to talk about this? If you'd like to call me, you'll have my phone number. So all you have to do is call me or text me. And we can have a conversation. But sometimes it just helps to, to have said to somebody, this is what I'm struggling with right now. Be like John. He was in prison and yet he found a way to get, get a word out so he could ask his question, am I hoping in the thing that I should be hoping in? And he got an answer. So I'm going to invite you. You don't have to, but, but get your phone out and send me a text message. Just tell me what it is that you're struggling with right now. The second part of the deal is I will pray for you. And I will pray that God will show you his mercy and grace. And that you'll find peace and joy. That's really what this, what this whole chapter says to me. That, that there's, so much, there's so much consternation. There's so much chaos going on in this, in this chapter and the chapter before. And then here's Jesus saying, hey, I can bring you rest for your souls.
Let us bow our heads in prayer. O oh, blessed Jesus, Lord of heaven and earth, we bring you these things that, that we're struggling with today. We bring you our, our doubts and our concerns and our, our weakness. We bring you all of that and, and we lay it at your feet and ask that you would help us. Teach us, Lord Jesus, that we might know your goodness and your compassion that is meant for all of us. And may we receive your grace that bears us up to help us to see the goodness of your kingdom. Wherever we are today, we pray that you would speak to us. Amen.